today we will talk about software design strategies software design strategies they are a very important component of a software development life cycle model software design strategy tells and defines what way the software coding will be performed by the different teams of developers it basically organizes the program in the form of modules in such a way they are easy to develop and change if there are any required changes in the software structured de design techniques help the developers to deal with the kind of complexity and size we have in the modern day software programs the modern day software programs are very highly complex softwares which have high requirement of number of lines of uh, to be coded the kind of functionality they desire and many more such associated factors so software design basically design decides what kind of software we are going to make what quality of software we are going to make so this phase becomes a very very vital phase and it also helps create analyst uh, create instructions by the analyst which help developers to know what kind of code is to be written in a particular situation in order to fulfill any functional requirement of the software so the basic importance of software design is that if we have any pre existing code with us and we want to know what kind of design was used to make this code if we want to re engineer that code if we want to make some changes in that code all those things can be done only with the help of software design and also when we are making a new project it is a very common practice for the project team to have write some code and produce original programs that support the application of the sy system for that software design is very very important design plays critical role it works as a catalyst which helps make a quality product at the end of the day for the software organization and ultimately for our client the different software design strategies broadly we classify the software design strategies into two categories top down design also called the function oriented design and the bottom up design also called as the object oriented design starting with top down design top down design as the name signifies we move from top to bottom what is this top and what is the bottom level that is to be understood top means we look at the software with all its functionality that it will deliver to us when the software is finally developed and delivered to us so in top down we identify the major components of the system and keep on decomposing those systems into subsystems with lower levels of functionality the top level has major components of the system have defined major functionality of the system this functionality is decomposed into further sub levels further sub components which have their own functionality their own definitions and we keep on decomposing these sub levels into further sub levels keep on creating further sub functionalities and we reach a point where no further sub leveling is required whether no sub levels are required to be created because we have reached a level where our functionality for a particular sub level is very very clear to us and from here at from this particular point of time we can go for developing those sub levels and knit the system into a bigger functional entity called the software system it is a step wise refinement model we go step by step we start from an abstract design and we keep on refining the software at each iteration and finally reach a level where we understand what actually is required to be done in implementation this type of strategy is suitable only if the requirements are very clearly known to us we have a clear vision about what actually we are going to have in the finally delivered system and we have a scope of developing the system from the scratch this type of approach is generally used 
if we are using a waterfall type of process development model for our software wherein each phase is adopted in a sequential manner and we have a lot of scope to entertain that particular s s uh, stage for its improvements for its well working and all that there are different advantages of top down design the main advantage of top down approach is its strong focus on requirements which helps to make a design responsive according to its requirements so this top down approach it basically is also called the function oriented approach that is it is more focused on attaining the required functionality the customer the client or the main objective of our software development is also to attain the required functionality for which we are building the software so this particular approach is more oriented for fulfilling the requirements and correspondingly we get a responsive design we get a responsive software as per our actual requirement this design approach also allows more people to be engaged in solution why because we have a big module we divide it into sub modules and sub modules are further divided into sub modules we keep on dividing till we reach a level where no further sub modeling is possible so every sub module in the system is developed by a particular team different teams are engaged and they work independently on their individual modules and they create their own modules which are further integrated into a common system at the end of the system process while integration testing the disadvantages of top down design include that this type of strategy basically has some project and system boundaries which make the kind of development we do as application specific oriented so this type of strategy is likely to miss the advantage of component reuse the component reuse is lagging in this kind of a design strategy we may not harness the advantage of reusing our built code in some other applications in future the system is also likely to miss the benefits of a well structured simple architecture because here we are going from a top level to different sub levels sub modules and further sub modules we are focused on functionality and we somehow miss certain aspects of a well structured architecture which can be possible in the bottom up approach this is how a typical top down design looks like we have module 1 which is the top module having integrated with it all the sub modules in the hierarchy here module 4 5 and 6 they are the lowest level of modules in the hierarchy and from top to down we move in order to refine our functionality so module 4 5 and 6 are the modules from which we get no further modules because we have refined them to the maximum possible level now the next is bottom up design it is also called object oriented design object oriented approach starts with the lowest level component of the hierarchy so here in this case we will follow a reverse approach it will be an opposite approach compared to top down design in this approach we start from bottom and move up to the highest level progressively to the top level of component of our system it starts with the most basic or primitive components and proceeds to higher level components that uses these lower level components so here we have a basic component which may be a component that we are reusing which we have already made somewhere and we try to or intend to incorporate that component also into our new system that we are making right now the amount of abstraction grows higher as the design moves more and more to higher levels so here we try to make the things more abstract to uh, the system and to the viewers as we reach the higher layers or levels of 
the system design. If an iterative enhancement type of process is followed, this approach becomes very very suitable because in this approach we keep on enhancing and refining our system as we keep on adding more higher layers to our system. So we can create in this case we can create a system that has some functionality in the beginning and we can keep on adding more functionality to our, to our system in the iterative stages. So this model basically starts functionality very early in its life cycle and more features can be added as we grow up in the development phases. So this is a typical bottom up design. We have lower levels which cascade and connect together. Each of the lower levels has some identified functionality and these lower levels connect to each other and provide higher levels of functionality and ultimately reach at the highest component level in the system. The, dis the advantages and disadvantages of bottom up design. The advantage which is very peculiar for bottom up design is that it promotes reusability. We can use some already existing components which have been built for some other applications into the new application being built. The second is this bottom up design can be used to hide the low level details of implementation. So as per our need, as per our requirements, we can hide details of implementation and we can use this feature very powerfully in order to implement the security requirements of our system. The disadvantages of bottom up design include it is not so closely related to the structure of the problem. It leads to the generation of potentially useful functions rather than most appropriate functions. So here because we are going for a reuse, we promote a reuse, we promote the existing codes that we have already used somewhere else to be used in our new programs. So here we, be, we are not going for a development from scratch, not a dedicated development from scratch. We try to reuse and this ultimately leads to some kind of compromise in terms of developing a function which is most appropriate for the current requirement. We develop functions which are useful for the current requirement rather than functions which are most appropriate for the current requirement. Now we take on the difference between top down and bottom up approach. The top down approach and bottom up approach both being very popular but have some basic differences. The bottom up approach basically starts with identifying and resolving smallest problems and they keep on integrating them together to solve the bigger problem. So they start from scratch in terms of problems and keep on integrating the solutions to the smaller problems in the hierarchy they come up to a level where they provide a solution to the total and complete set of requirements which have been created for this particular project into context. The top down model basically focuses on breaking the bigger problem into smaller ones. So it starts from the complete set of requirements and keep on creating modules and sub modules till a level is attained where all the requirements are addressed. In the top down case, the model knows what are the exact requirements a customer needs to be fulfilled in the final solution delivered to him very well in advance. The bottom up model is basically suitable for object oriented programming languages like Java and C++ which are the modern day languages and modern day softwares are using this bottom up model for implementation of solutions to the software problems. The top down model is being followed for structural programming languages like C or Fortran. The bottom up model is better suited as it ensures minimum data redundancy and also it has its main focus on reusability of software. So we feel more convenient to design solutions because of reusability 
the coding effort here minimizes because of this particular feature that bottom up model provides us as it's one of the ingredient the top down model has high ratio of redundancy as the size of the project increases when we are going for professional software products due to huge requirement set definitely the size of software will be high and in that case we are going to have a lot of redundancy in the design as well as the coding that we do for implementation of that design the interaction between various modules in bottom up model is very high and this basically makes use of the object oriented programming while in top down model this tight coupling and there is low interactive between various modules the kind of approach the bottom up model uses is called the composition approach because it integrates the different smaller modules which are developed or reused and builds up a bigger level in hierarchy so as to create the final required features of the software while the top down model is based on a decomposition approach where a higher level of system is broken down into subsystems and further subsystems in order to identify the basic levels from where basic functionalities can be built up the last difference between the top down and the bottom up approach is in the bottom up approach it is sometimes difficult to analyze the overall functionality of the system in the early phases here we have a basic feature requirement in the early phases we keep on building that set of basic features and we integrate till we reach the final required features of the customer when in top down approach it may not be possible to break the problem into smaller set of problems so all these differences make top down approach and bottom up model approach used as per specific requirements of the software to be built thank you